Chow, Scholarly Communications Librarian and Institutional Repository Manager at Whitman College. And I'm presenting with my colleagues, Dana Bronson, our Associate Archivist, and Paige Morfitt, Digital Assets and Metadata Librarian, about our ongoing project to streamline and standardize descriptive metadata across our repository collections ahead of our, mi our migration to Islandora 8. One of the main reasons we moved to Islandora to begin with is that we wanted a single platform to host the full range of our digital collections, which include honors theses, archival collections of photographs and digitized documents, oral histories and newspapers, uh, as well as collections we host on behalf of other campus GLAM entities, the Campus Museum and the Campus Art Gallery. So these, con these collections serve different communities and have been created in different parts of the library, or in some cases not in the library at all, with varying metadata expectations. And the purpose of our project is to establish common ground for metadata across all of our collections. Due to the diverse origins of our digital collections and historically a lack of staff to prioritize metadata work, we haven't had consistent policies or documentation on metadata creation or structure. Much of our metadata, unsurprisingly, is messy, and previous moves across platforms have not improved it. We had migrated from Content DM and DSpace to BPress. The prospect of digitizing our run of student newspapers prompted the move to Islandora. In preparing metadata for the initial ingests into Islandora, we discovered a number of inconsistencies across our collections coming from BPress. But our priorities at that point were in establishing our initial mods mapping, not in, in remediation. Our vendors work to produce a more standardized model also didn't really simplify or streamline our metadata content based on that mods mapping. As our collections were ingested and we got to know the Islandora platform better, we better understood the effects of our metadata structure on solar search and sort and on display across collections, namely, that some inconsistencies across collections really complicated our searching and sorting. We undertook a date remediation project within Islandora 7 to address some of those issues. So based on the lessons that we learned from these previous migrations and from that other uh, remediation work, we decided to seize the opportunity to take institutional control of our metadata and establish standards, document policies and workflows, and clean up our metadata ahead of our Islandora 8 migration. So now Dana's gonna give you an overview of our metadata standardization project. Thanks, Amy. So in early March of this year, we decided to form a metadata working group to begin to untangle many of the issues that Amy outlined. Between the three of us, we're the people responsible for managing most of our library's metadata decisions, but we had largely been working in isolation from each other. In coming together as a group, we've been able to have really productive conversations about the metadata for our digital objects. We only got to meet in person once before we had to trans transition to remote meetings, but working from home has given us a lot more time than we might have had previously to dedicate to this work. We made the decision early on to standardize the fields that we're using across both our institutional repository, which contains faculty scholarship and theses, as well as our digital archives as much as possible. Since our users are not making the distinction in the same, same way that we often do between our digital collections, we wanted them to have a fairly seamless searching experience across the entire platform. After doing an analysis of our metadata, we determined that we have 158 unique fields in Islandora 7. Our plan was to analyze each field to determine which fields could be deleted, which fields could be consolidated, what to name each field, and how the use of each field should be standardized. In order to keep track of this sprawling yet highly detailed project, we have been using a Trello board to track our progress and decisions. Each field was assigned a card on the board that linked out to a template form that we used to define the field and how it was used, as well as documentation we pulled together from other public metadata manuals, primarily from colleges and universities, to help guide our own decision-making process. Our metadata, metadata librarian page is now going to walk through this, what this process looked like in more detail and provide an example of a specific field that we worked on. Thank you. 
So once we had a complete list of our fields and they were given their own Trello card, as Dana mentioned, we clustered similar fields together, together to tackle them at the same time. Each Trello, card, um, each Trello card had three attachments, an Excel template, a Google Doc template, and an RDF mapping template. It, became easy, it was easier to tackle similar fields at once, so we created a single Trello card for each cluster. A specific example of a cluster card is seen in the fields type of work, work type, and document type. For assessment, the first step was to create an Excel sheet to compare side-by-side -side uses in Islandora. This helped us get a better understanding as to how these fields were used in the various collections, as well as compare them against each other. We evaluated these fields individually before meeting to discuss as a Individual assessment done, we moved to the Google Doc template and the second attachment on the Trello card. Here we focused on what we want each field to look like moving forward. It was decided we only needed one type field, work type. From there, we came up with, from there we came up with the definition of what work type would be, that it would be a controlled vocabulary, that it was a public field, and that it was repeatable. After we decided what this field would look like going forward, we discussed what a cleanup would look like. And in this case, it meant removing type of work and document type. Before the act of cleaning happened, we documented all of our changes so all stakeholders, including our future selves, had something to reference. Several documents were created, including one for our systems librarian, one for our cataloger, and several that pertain specifically for creating and mapping to our yeah. The separate documents shared information for specifically targeted people as to not overwhelm them with information and it allowed relevant information to remain in the forefront. Lastly, a document of all decisions was created for everyone. This combined all Google Doc template decisions so there was one document to refer to opposed to the multiple across the Trello board. Documents were organized in a spreadsheet listed by Island or a field to ensure all documents were up to date for each specific field. When everything was up to date, it was marked on the sheet as done or up to date. For document examples, the, document, the documentation for our systems librarian indicated document type and type of work were being removed so he could tweak the twig templates. The cataloger's document indicated that we removed document type because of the fields mentioned that was the only field that impacted her workflow. In both cases, the systems librarian and cataloger were able to update their workflows if, their ch if our changes impacted them in ways we were unaware of. Once our documentation was done, then the structural cleanup began. For this example, it indicated that I would, I would go into the spreadsheets and transfer content from type of work into work type, and then delete the unwanted field columns, type of work, and document type. Because our collections were so different from one another, it became important to keep track of all moving parts, including tracking which spreadsheets could be worked on immediately, which ones had to wait, and which collections were imported without a spreadsheet. It was challenging keeping track of so many moving, so many moving parts, and too many spreadsheets were made to help me keep track. The multiple spreadsheets and field focus work also made mapping from mods to RDF easier. While I prepared each Trello card for our meetings, it allowed time for me to focus on the one field mapping and to not become overwhelmed myself. This brings us to the third attachment in the Trello card, the RDF mapping template. A lesson learned from our previous migration was that it was difficult to migrate without doing a metadata cleanup. During moving from BPress to mods had challenges specifically regarding finding correct mods mapping to prevent accidental merging. Previously, Mistakes resulted in incorrect mapping, incorrect formatting, and a lot of raised eyebrows. With those challenges still in mind, it was important to make our transition from Islandora 7 to 8 as smooth as possible. Specifically, specifically when looking at the complexity of mods and the seemingly simplicity of RDF, it was even more prevalent that we tackled our metadata now. The first step in creating an RDF crosswalk was to figure out what RDF was. At the time, it was a giant black box, and I had no idea if it was XML, what it looked like, or how it was similar or dissimilar to mods. As, as I explored the dimensions of the RDF box, I began making the crosswalk exper experimenting in Protege. 
At the time, I utilized all schema that seemed to work with RDF, including BibFrame, Mads, Premise, and it became very messy. I ended up falling in with the Islandora Metadata Interest Group. Through their work, through their, through their crosswalk mapping and meetings and began cleaning up the organization of our mappings as well. However, even with MIG's help, it was evident that the structure of our metadata would cause problem upon, problems upon our migration to Islandora 8. Then our group was formed, the Metadata Working Group. As our group worked on simplifying metadata to make sure it was sustainable across all collections and for various people with varying degrees of knowledge on metadata, we ended up making the mapping from mods to RDF easier and making our mapping sustainable across different platforms. An example would be looking at our types field. We started out with three. After we collaborated as a group, we ended up with one field, work type. And needless to say, it's easier to map one type field than it is three. This group also allowed multiple minds to look at the mapping from mods to RDF and generate questions previously gone unasked. As we finish, as we finish fields and finalize mappings, I compile the information into a single spreadsheet for quick access, which includes individual field definitions, mods expressions, twig and solar information, and RDF mapping, as well as other information regarding those fields. I'm also in the process of adding information onto a wiki and GitHub. As we continue working on our metadata, cleaning and restructuring it, I continue to update this master spreadsheet as well as our RDF mapping, which over time has become tighter and tighter. As we as a group continue to move through the Islandora fields, our clean structure will make it easier for us to migrate when the time comes. And with that said, I will now hand it back to Dana. Thanks, Paige. So at this point, we've made it through about 70% of our fields, and we're hoping to wrap up the first phase of our work by the fall. One lesson that we've really been painfully reminded of throughout the process is how important it is to document every single decision that is being made. Well, we did have an agreed upon system for tracking the work that we were doing, there have been a few times we forgot to wrap up loose ends of a field that we were working on, only to realize a few months down the road that we never actually wrote down what our plan was for a particular field. So our advice to all of you is you can never have too much documentation when embarking on a metadata cleanup project. We initially envisioned this project with a linear multi-phase progression, moving from evaluating our fields to cleanup to migration into Islandora 8. It turns out it has been much more iterative as we unexpectedly have a student who has been able to start implementing some of our changes to our actual metadata content this summer. And we've had to respond to some pressing cleanup issues based on the needs of our users. Ultimately, this has been a good thing though, as it has allowed us to actually test out our decisions. And in several cases, we have realized that what we had written down initially wasn't in fact clear or fleshed out enough to implement. We also recently started experimenting with the Islandora 8 sandbox to get an idea of how the metadata will display and sort so we can make sure that what we're trying to do with our cleanup project will actually work within the system that we're migrating to. And I think it's important to note that all of us have skeletons in our metadata closets. So we hope that by sharing some of ours with you, we can provide insight into one way to begin to tackle this problem. So with that said, if there's time, we would love to open up the conversation now for questions. Thank you. So the first question in the chat is, uh, not sure if this was mentioned or not, and maybe just missed it, but how did you identify all of your unique fields? Do you want to take that? Hmm? You want to take that? Like, that is, yeah, yeah, that is a very good question. Um, well, first, we when we migrated from BPress into mods, um, all of our fields started out as the same. So we had a lot of fields, but they were all the same. Um, and then as we really adjusted our collections and added fields in Islandora, um, what I ended up doing is that I really just, I went into the mods in each collection and I downloaded a sample from each collection and basically used Notepad++ and I used Oxygen to really isolate just the fields. So it, it, was, it was a lot of manual work to, to, to find all of those fields, so. <laughs> Do 
Do we have any other questions? Um, someone suggests uh, there is a simple solar query tool for that if you want it from solar, which has been linked in the chat. And I think the issue with that is that it kind of gets complicated with all of our roles in Islandora, at least for at Whitman, um, because we don't have, we have so many moving parts that I don't really, I don't have the knowledge to kind of use solar and to bring that out. And so at the time it was just the easiest thing to do because we were still working on other issues that were going on. So, um, but thank you for that. 